Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. This is my second video from the 3D printing series. You might want to watch the first one if you missed it to see what happened so far. The link is in the top right corner as usual. Thank you very much for the huge amount of comments and constructive feedback. I was really blown away by your positivity and the will to help. First of all, yes, I did make a mistake at some point. The calibration and the bad leveling of the printer was somehow off and that caused a lot of issues. As I did calibrate the printer before I started to do the test, I'm still not 100% sure what went wrong, but I have two theories. Either this magnetic build plate was not completely in place when I did the calibration, or there was some filament stuck to the nozzle while I was calibrating, although there's less chance for that as the process is done with a heated nozzle. Anyway, the printer is now properly calibrated and I printed tons of things since then. Here's a Banshee for example, the sort of standard test object for 3D printers and it turned out to be pretty good. I'm sure experts could find some issues, there was a bit of stringing for example, but the surface on the side is really smooth, I like the result. Thank you for all the 3D files by the way you sent me to test, I did try some of them but there are so many, I think I will do a dedicated video to show all of them. What I definitely wanted to test are some tracks from 4D Bricks. If you don't know them, this company sells compatible track elements, most of these designs are not available from LEGO. But they offer a very very generous extra option on their website, you can actually download the 3D files totally free of charge and you can print the tracks yourself at home. So my first attempt was to print this quarter straight track piece, it is small enough for some experiments. Here is the result, as you can see it connects perfectly to the LEGO track pieces, Oh, by the way, these designs have supports included, so you don't have to care about this aspect either, very cool. It fits perfectly, the train runs on it without any issue, a great out of the box experience. It even seems to connect to studied pieces, but if I test the standalone clutch power, then you can see that it is way too weak, the piece practically falls off the studs. If we take a closer look at the recommended parameters on the webpage, Based on the temperatures used, I assume the recommended material is not PLA, might be ABS I guess. Seems to be logical since LEGO is made of ABS. I had an old roll of ABS filament at home so I thought I will give it a try, perhaps there's a difference between the materials and they might behave differently. So here's one printed in ABS, it also connects to the regular track pieces fine, but the clutch power is still way too weak. As printed ABS is less flexible than PLA and in general more difficult to work with, I went back to PLA. I had another idea then, what if I upscale the whole piece just a little bit? If I'm lucky then it can still connect to the other parts, but the stud connections will become better. So here's this version and no, that wasn't my best idea. Stud connections on the top did improve, but still not as good as I wanted them to be, and thanks to the increased outer dimensions, this part can't really connect to other track pieces anymore. I needed another solution, so I fired up my ancient version of 3D Studio Max that was released almost 20 years ago. I used to work with this a lot and I only wanted to tweak the file a little bit so it does the job perfectly. Here's our track piece. Luckily the studs are separate objects in the file, so I can quickly and easily select only those, then scale them up along the two axes by 104%, it should be enough. I didn't change anything else, only the studs. So here's the result and it really works like a charm. Proper track connection, proper stud connection, not a 100% Lego piece experience, but it is pretty close. You might ask why these files didn't work out of the box for me, well I guess that's part of the 3D printing game, different settings are required for different printers, you might need to tweak things even if you only change the filament and nothing else. So now that I found the receipt for my setup, I want it to go bigger. Here's a cross track piece, let's try this one. I did the necessary tweaks with the studs, printed it and here it is, and again it works perfectly. Do you need different curves for your layout? No problem, 4D bricks got you covered. I didn't print many of these as one takes almost 3 hours to complete, but you can get the idea why these might be useful. So I can say that the LEGO train layout customization is where a 3D printer can become really handy. I have to correct my statement from the first video, it is indeed possible to print stud compatible parts and it wasn't that difficult at all. Now let's get back to the technic parts. I received this link from one of you below the previous video. Thank you very much as it turned out to be a wonderful parametric tool to design custom Technic compatible pieces. Let's say we need a T-shaped lift arm but with a cross axle hole at one end instead of the pinhole. It is quite easy to replace, let's export it, then it goes in the slicer. 
My slicer reported an error, but there's no need for correction, it will print just fine. Due to the small rims at the bottom of the object, it will require some support. Now let's print it. This is the first result, and it is not bad at all. The cross axle hole seems to be just fine, the pinholes are maybe a little bit too loose. And this is where this solution really shines, you can simply change the parameters and try again. Here's this version, better but not perfect, time to change the numbers again. One thing I forgot to show you, you can easily remove the support with the cross axle and you can also use it to test the holes or even to clean them a bit if required. Based on my tests, it is always better to make pin and cross axle holes just a little bit tighter. If it is too loose, then there's not much you can do, but it is still possible to improve the situation if it is too tight. And here you go, this part just works. Now that we have the parameters fine-tuned for our setup, let's try to make something more complex. I just made up this shape by playing with the tool, wanted to test something with alternating holes, as so far I only printed the ideal setup with the holes facing upwards. Here's the first attempt, the vertical holes are fine as expected, but the horizontal ones are somewhat loose. Since there's no separate parameter for these, I could either load the file in another tool and change the horizontal holes, or just try to tweak the parameter here. Let's try this one. So, here's the result, and it works pretty well. Vertical pinholes are still okay, horizontal ones are already okay. There's a slight difference between them, but I could already live with this piece. So, I think I need to change my conclusion a bit from the previous video. Not completely, as I still don't think you can easily print LEGO compatible pieces at home, you must be very lucky to have usable results for the first try with files you download from the internet. But if you dedicate some time to study your printer, tweak the settings and the files, then the results can be definitely usable. Some of you said I would need to try another slicer or another printer, because my problems definitely come from these. Well, honestly, I don't think so, the problem was actually my lack of experience. This is a totally usable printer with lots of features making it comfortable to use, especially for beginners, like the built-in Wi-Fi, the touchscreen, or the fact that it comes fully pre-assembled. You can certainly find cheaper ones producing great prints, and unfortunately due to its design there's one thing I wanted to try and it is not recommended to print with this printer, flexible pieces. Officially, TPU printing is not supported due to the Bowden type extruder, as the extruder is mounted here on the frame, the filament is pushed through this tube, and with a flexible filament it can be problematic. I know that some people made it work, but I already managed to clog the tube and the nozzle with an old wood fill filament, so I don't want to risk it again. Luckily, flexible filaments like TPU work totally fine with 3D printers equipped with direct extruders, so next time we will use another printer, and I will show you a very very exciting possibility for LEGO builds that is somewhat related to this fun little squishy cube, but will be way more useful. Oh, and this guy here will be also involved. As always, please share your thoughts and feedback about anything you saw here today, also let me know if there's anything you would like to see being 3D printed for LEGO. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.